So I um I see a decline. It's a decline in me. Now, despite the concussion, I'm able to still, you know, read. I get into reading a lot that year, 2020. I read a lot, but I I was very paranoid because understand I had somebody try to like someone that harmed me and I'm thinking he may come after me and permanently like silence me for saying what I said because it was um it was a lot of cases where you know people who testified in court they end up getting killed like um I was just looking up people because with my OCD I go crazy sometimes I was looking up people who may have testified and got killed what's a perfect example um yeah, here it was a girl, I think in Michigan or Detroit. She was sexually assaulted. And she tried to testify. She did testify against this guy, black dude, and she wound up getting killed because she was uh molested or raped, one of the two, or sexually assaulted. And I couldn't function at all. At the time, I was obsessed with this movie called Roman J. Esquire. And let me just tell you, let me just put this out here. Um if you want to know my major that I'm doing right now, I'll just say it because this is um, what I was taking a class on and I'm, I'm still learning every day because I'm learning. But um, I was taking a paralegal studies class online, but um, I wanted to re-enroll and take it in person so I could be more disciplined with just going to class and not missing my assignments and keeping up with everything because I wasn't in school for two years. And um, I want to just condition myself to be a college student, but I am interested in learning about the legal system, the legal field. And I don't really want to say what my career interest is yet, because it's, it's, it seems a little it seems a little impossible with everything I'm dealing with, with the injury, because you have to you know do a lot of reading. But let me just say that this movie inspired me to get into law because before uh, that year my my interest was biology but with my seizures i can't really do science anymore because you know i can't do like dead matter at all but this movie was about a guy who i don't want to say this is like my autobiography but he is literally just like me looks like me denzel looks a little bit like me when he puts weight on if you see how i looked in my old videos i look a little bit like the character in the movie I, I mean, I, I I sort of started dressing like him at one point, but um, I don't have my ID with me because I did not show you my, my real name. I don't put my name out there, but this movie was really important to me at the time because I um I told in the in the movie I don't want to tell the whole movie. It's really good. It should have got it should have got an uh, an Oscar, an Academy Award. It was nominated for one, but. In the movie, um, it's, an, it's a lawyer. He's a pro bono lawyer. He makes like 200... He makes like $500 a week. Lives in Los Angeles. And he begins to reject the... Advoc like his, his whole um, fight for, for people that don't have a voice. He's an advocate for people that don't have a voice. He begins to neglect that whole ideology of helping people beneath him and he begins to just have like an obsession with materialistic things he begins to idolize materials more than morals because he's like all the stuff i've done for people over the years all the good i've done all the all the um all of the um back breaking i've done for people it it's just it's it's pointless and i'm kind of, i'm kind of at that point myself where um, it's a it's a quote in the movie where he says, I'm tired of doing the impossible for the ungrateful. I say that a lot. But in the movie, he tells on a um, one of his clients, you know how in law you have a client, a person like a client and a, um, a business like a client relationship. You have a, a relationship with a client and a lawyer. There are certain information, certain information you can't reveal. Like it's, it's it's a certain confidentiality you have you have to have as a lawyer. You can't tell certain information. So um, one of his clients that he got that um, he tried to get a deal with from with the uh, DA in the movie, 
he wound up telling who the shooter was of a it was a grocery store clerk or like a it was a clerk at a store that got killed he identified the like the whereabouts of the person that was also involved in the shooting like it was a robbery or something like that and he wound up collecting a reward for it but he wasn't allowed to tell the information because that's um you know that goes against like the the ethics of being a lawyer you're not supposed to tell certain information is supposed to be kept confidential he he tells and um eventually he meets up with the guy in prison because he you know it was pretty obvious like he was the only one that knew who told because like the guy the guy who who told him this that was his client because his mom paid for um the lawyer he was killed in prison because they thought he he snitched he well he what he did tell he was only but he he wanted him to do um less than than five years but they were trying to give him 10 years but anyway eventually in the movie unfortunately he dies for telling he dies for because he he got the hundred thousand dollar reward he only spent like nine thousand dollars out of the money and he returned the rest back but he eventually is killed by the guys one of his henchmen because he's charged with the murder and um that's all i was just thinking about for like the whole beginning of that year like the guy coming back after me telling but let me just say this too um sorry about that i want to because after my injury with the car accident i got really tired and i wasn't really reading like i once did but i want to once again build my tolerance of reading and not getting tired again and slowly learn all the courses of like political science, even maybe um, paralegal studies too, both at the same time. And then I want to take it from there because I just see like if I can't do science, I want to just have a career where I'm able to do it for a pretty long time. But um, because if you hear me in my old channel or my beginning of my videos. And I'm slowly gaining my vocabulary back. I'm not like brain dead. It's just I get really tired thinking because of my injury. But um, back to what I was saying. Oh, yeah. I have an interest in the legal the legal system, like the field of law. That's a, just an interest in me. That's the interest that I have. I'm trying to pursue right now because I can't pursue biology. And that's like the next that's a, the next best thing for me. But um yeah i um sorry i was really obsessed with like death that year i thought he was going to come and harm me and my mom i lived in an apartment building and sometimes the door downstairs because the people were slamming so hard you were able to just walk in sometimes it would be open and i would be i was so frightened like every time i would walk up the steps i thought he was waiting for me like near the door or behind the door or up the stairs whether to kill me because you know he could have easily found my address he could have hired somebody to see where I, I lived or asked at the job what's his address but around that time um nothing happened you know eventually he was so let me tell you this he was released i believe the day before his 26th birthday because he he's a year older than me and um let me tell you this so they changed the district attorney for that case and eventually because it was supposed to be in february but he told me that um it, it got pushed back because the court system is so it, it's, it's just so congested with different cases they pushed back the case I forgot. I think they pushed it back. I think that's what it was. But you know what happened the very next month, the very day he was um, released on his birthday, I started freaking out because I didn't know what he was going to do. But um, they gave me this fucking paper saying if he comes near you, call 911 like that was going to do something. But um, let me tell you this. Where I thought God was looking out for me, the very um, time I think that we're going to have like a case happen. We're going to have like the trial start. They're talking about this whole coronavirus, this whole um, 
Chinese virus, that's what Trump was calling it. And this really fucks up the court cases everywhere in Philly. Like all everything is pushed back. You know, I, I thought like I had a I was gonna have a hard time finally like like having this case be settled. He um I, I just I was give I asked through email because I never really called. I just asked, hey, is um what's the status of the case? And the DA, it was a new guy. He was just like, yeah, um, it got pushed back because of the coronavirus. I don't really know what's the status of it right now. Just, just, uh, he was just telling me, just stay tuned. Just, just, uh, just wait until we hear something. And that whole year, really until the George Floyd riots, I just, I just really was paranoid a lot because of just me telling me going to the police and the fact that I was on my own, I had really no support system at all. That's when I began to see the reality of family. And I'll just be honest with you. Around that time, I began to develop a really strong hatred for my own race. Like, really strong. Like, you can see it in some of my videos, but I, I, wasn't, I wasn't talking like that on camera. But it was really strong where, and I'll just say it. I would would basically I would I would put down my own race, but I would uplift other people. And it didn't matter to me. Asians, blacks, I mean Asians, whites, Hispanics. And at the time there was a lot of attacks on Asian people around this time going on. So I'm working at a store, I'm working at this grocery store, BJ's. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big, um, like black and white, like it's a, it's a strong presence of whites and blacks at this job. And I do whatever I can out of just frustration from that case of kissing up to the whites there. I mean, I, I really looking back, I wouldn't do that now, but I had so much anger and what happened to me that I, I literally, every black person at my job. I would, I wouldn't bother talking to, I wouldn't make conversation with, and I would, I would, my behavior would show that, but I got a little more bold, I would just say things about black people, I would say jokes, I would say, I would encourage other co-workers to say the same, and they would sort of just laugh, looking back, that, that sounds kind of dumb, but just understand where my mind was, and um, I, I, I can admit it, I was a real, I was a real shine, because it's, a, it's okay to have an opinion about something, but I went a little too far. Because let me just point this out: the 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 white judge that um that took that was part of the case, he dropped the aggravated assault case against the guy, and um you know there was a white woman and a white owner of that store. They didn't really bother helping me, so looking back, it looked really stupid. But I really begin to develop like a, a real hatred for black people because I just told myself everything bad happened in my life from the time I was robbed, the time well when I got my I attacked, everything when I got when I got jumped at twelve, everything bad that's happened in my life has come from black people. And that very year, I don't think it was one point where um um I like I'm I have contact with a black person. Other than the guy that worked in my building, he was like a maintenance dude and my mom, there wasn't really no contact at all. And I began to just develop this logic of you know, I'm alive because I'm not around black people or everything good in my life comes from whites, but everything bad and I still kinda hold that belief. Let me just explain this. I'm more balanced now, but as much as I, I don't trust people at work, I have to acknowledge that all the jobs that I've ever had come from white people. The air that I breathe comes from white people. You know, the um, the clothes on my back, the car that I drive, the books that I read, the religion that my mom worships comes from the very people that, that um, I may have some criticism of sometimes, but there is no black culture without white people. That's one thing I can say. And I'm going to say this again. From the air we breathe, the religion we worship, 
the cars we drive, the food we eat, the water we drink, um, even the rap music we listen to. It comes from the very people that we claim are racist because black culture is basically white culture with black face in it. A black man is, is simply just a white man with dark skin. Everything a black man does, he learns from white people. Now, they whites are a little more smoother with the things they do, like the mafia versus, you know, Bloods and Crips. But um, I'm going to do another part to this.